Now, I asked Senator Obama to go to Iraq. I asked him to go back. And I asked him to meet with General Petraeus, and our great ambassador there, and Ambassador Crocker. And I said I would go with him if necessary. I'd be glad to go with him. Because these issues are far more important than any election. The spirit of this nation is far more important than any political campaign. And you know, it's not often that I read the statements issued by my opponents. But let me tell you what, what his, his campaign and he has said in, in response to this proposal to accompany him to Iraq so he could meet General Petraeus, and he could meet Ambassador Crocker, and he could see, he could see the fact that Sadr City is quiet, and he could see that with the Maliki government has taken control of Basra, he could see that the Iraqi military is leading the fight in these places with the support of American troops. To say that we failed in Iraq and that we're not succeeding does not comport with the facts on the ground. So we've got to show him the facts on the ground. Let me tell you what his, what his, what his campaign said about my proposal. John McCain's proposal is nothing more than a political stunt. And we don't need any more mission accomplished banners or walks through Baghdad markets to know that Iraq's leaders have not made the political progress that was the stated purpose of the surge. The American people don't want any more false promises of progress. They deserve a real debate about a war that has out overstretched our military and cost us thousands of lives and hundreds of billions of dollars without making the U.S. safer. My friends, that is a profound misunderstanding, a profound misunderstanding of what's happened in Iraq and what's at stake in Iraq. Because if we set a date for withdrawal, which Senator Obama wants to do, there will be chaos, there will be genocide, there will be increased Iranian influence there, and we will have to go back with further sac sacrifice of American blood and treasure. I will never let that happen, especially in America. To you. Senator Obama has said you know that he wants to sit down without any preconditions with the President of Iran, Ahmadinejad. He has said that, that he wants to sit down with the leader of a country that a few days ago called Israel a quote, sinking corpse. He wants to sit with a, with a leader of a country that is, uh, as recent news reports indicate clearly, are moving towards the acquisition of nuclear weapons, which could destabilize the entire region, obviously, not to mention the direct threat to the exis existence of the state of Israel. More importantly, perhaps, to many families, and to you and me, this is the leader of a country that is sending the most explosive devices, most lethal explosive devices, into Iraq and killing young Americans. Now, why is it that Senator Obama wants to sit down with the president of Iran that hasn't yet sat down with General Petraeus, the leader of our troops? Now, I look forward to continuing this debate with Senator Obama and Senator Clinton as well. I look forward to continuing this debate. And I want you to know, my dedication to this nation is one that I'm not going to worry about the political consequences. Maybe over a year ago, you might remember, it was people that declared my campaign, quote, dead. You just might recall. In fact, I was reminded of the words of Chairman Mao, who said, it's always darkest before it's totally black. Well, we came back. But we came back. And and at the time, as you may recall, there were many people who said, well, Senator McCain, you're, uh, you, you can't support the war and expect it to succeed. At that time, I said the surge was vital. And I also said I would much rather lose a campaign than, uh, than lose a war. And so we are succeeding there. It's long and it's hard and it's tough and it remains tough. And it's a dangerous place. And young Americans 
are serving with the utmost skill and courage. And frankly, America... And frankly, my friends, uh, America has a long way to go. We've got challenges in Afghanistan. We're facing the transcendent challenge of radical Islamic extremism. And those are challenges that I think my life has prepared me to face. Uh, every once in a while you have a, uh, an experience that puts everything in the right political perspective and the right priorities for you. And that happened to me in Wolfboro, New Hampshire, back last August, a long time ago. A woman stood up at the town hall meeting and said, Senator McCain, would you do me the honor of wearing a bracelet with my son's name on it, Matthew Stanley. Matthew was 22 years old. He was killed in combat outside of Baghdad just before Christmas last year. I said, I would be honored to wear this bracelet. And then she said, but Senator McCain, I want you to promise me one thing, and that is that you would do everything in your power to make sure that my son's death was not in vain. I take that. I take that very And I believe I can inspire a generation of young Americans to serve a cause greater than their self-interest. These are tough times. We haven't talked about housing. We haven't talked about health care. We haven't talked about American families that are hurting today. And I'd be glad to talk more to you about that. There's a lot of issues, but I want to hear from you. But the important thing I want you to know is that I believe that America's greatest, best days are ahead of us, not behind us. I believe America's future is very bright. We have short-term challenges. We have short-term challenges, but let me just finally say to you that I still believe America will be in the 21st century.